All right, joining us now, former Secretary of Homeland Security under President Obama, Jay Johnson. Also with us is the Executive Director of Catholic Charities of the Rio Grande Valley, Sister Norma Pimentel. It's good to have you both. In just under two hours, Secretary Johnson will present Sister Norma with the Leadership Award at the annual Concordia Summit in New York City to recognize her work with refugees and immigrants and it's good to have you both mr secretary i first just want to ask you about the latest news on this as a former head of homeland security does uh sheriff salazar have a point that perhaps uh what has happened here presents some legal issues for the governors who committed this this act of quite frankly cruelty good morning mika um i'm not prepared at this point to uh, offer a legal judgment about whether or not what these governors are doing constitutes a, a federal offense or, or, or a state offense. I do know that it frankly is a political stunt. There is a right way and a wrong way to assist migrants in getting into the interior of the United States after they've been released by the Border Patrol at, at the border. Um, if Governor DeSantis uh, represents the most cynical attitude toward immigration in this country. Um, the person to my left represents the best of America, in, in my judgment. Uh, Sister Norma has been year after year, day after day, literally clothing and feeding migrants, doing her duty as a Christian. After the Border Patrol releases them in, in uh, the Rio Grande Valley in southern Texas, uh, she takes them in and uh, steers clear of politics year after year. And as she describes it, uh, it's her mission is to restore dignity and, and honor life. And so I will be honored in about an hour to present Sister Norma with uh, this leadership award at the Concordia Summit here in New York City. Sister Norma, congratulations on receiving this award. You deserve it, certainly. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. The border it's where you live. It's where you're from. Yes. It's who you are. Yes. You greet each day at the border with your eyesight, with a sense of mercy, with a sense of compassion. I would argue that very few people in this land know the border better than you do. Mm -hmm. We see each day on the news thousands of people crossing the border, fleeing from whatever country they're coming from, whatever unruly situation their lives have been south of the border, trying to get into America. What would you do if you were in charge of the border? I would, I would make sure that, first off, not lose sight of the fact that they're people, they're human beings, and they, they are in desperate need of, of being treated with dignity and respect. And so, and then we must, provide for them a, a safe passage, an orderly way to respect our laws and, and enter our country safely and orderly in a way that, that protects our country and protects them as well. You know? Do we have enough help at the border, the United States government, employees, the customs and border people, uh, health people, do we have enough to get that job done? You know, I, I work with the local law enforcement, the Border Patrol, all the time in great partnership, and they're excellent men and women. That they, they work with me and they want to make sure they do things right. And I think that all the support that, that the United States can give them to do their job, it's always good, you know, because I think uh, they need that help to make sure that we do have a safe borders and that, that we do have the right way that, to treat people that are, are asking to, for protection, for safety in our country. What do you say to people, we don't mind, we welcome immigrants, but we want them to come here legally? Definitely. I think that providing a safe passage is the right thing to do because uh, we keep them from exposing their lives to enter through a river that is very dangerous and, and risking the lives of children and mothers and families is, is not the right way. We need to provide that safe passage through ports of entry. And I think that right now something like that is already happening through exemptions to Title 42. Just amplify and secure that process would be excellent.
So, Mr. Secretary, let's talk about the border for a minute. We heard from the president uh, yesterday, asked about the situation. He noted that the countries, northern trial countries and Mexico, fewer migrants at this moment are coming to the United States. That really, instead, it's three other nations. It's Venezuela, Cuba, and Nicaragua. That's right. where the, the, the issue is. What's your assessment of that, and what can be done about it? It's very much an evolving picture. Um, when I was in office, uh, the numbers were annually about 300, 400,000 a year. We're now getting that in a matter of six to eight weeks. Mm. Also, when I was in office, as Sister Norma knows, we were dealing with migrants from the Northern Triangle, women, children from Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador. That is less so now. It's, as you noted, uh, Cuba, Nicaragua, Venezuela. Those countries are literally imploding and the migration is headed not just to the north, but to the south as well. On top of that, we do not have diplomatic relations, good diplomatic relations with these countries, so they do not agree to repatriate their citizens. We, we, we can't send them back in the conventional way like you would in, in, in Central America. So uh, the, the, the resources we have on the southern border to deal with this, the Border Patrol, the holding facilities are much bigger now than they were seven, eight years. Uh, but the numbers are much bigger and the smugglers are much better at this. They have bigger buses. They have more ability to move larger numbers of, of people. It's the communities, frankly, on the southern border, and Sister Norman knows this all too well, that have to absorb these numbers uh, day after day after day. So, as I said earlier, there is a right way and a wrong way to uh, absorb uh, this migration, and a lot of it has to be through cooperation between the federal government, the state government, Catholic charities in the Rio Grande Valley, Catholic charities up here in, in the north. And, you know, if I could put on my border security enforcement hat for a moment here, we do need to send the message, frankly, um, south that we are sending people back. We are sending people back at over 100,000 a month. And that was a message that I would emphasize when I was in office. And I discovered in Washington in particular, you have to repeat yourself about 25 times before anybody will take note of what you're actually saying. So we do need to send that message. And we are, in fact, sending people back. Former Secretary of Homeland Security under President Obama, Jay Johnson, thank you very much. And thank you to the Executive Director of Catholic Charities of the Rio Grande Valley, Sister Norma Pimentel. Congratulations on your award today, but thank you for your enduring work. Thank you.